Greetings, royal family. It's time for Love and, Love and Hip Hop down in Atlanta. So the episode opens up where it left off last week at Jock's game night that these ladies ruined, okay? Uh, so Safari's in the building, Young Jock is in the building, Shooter, he enters with Kaomi and they're dressed alike. So <laughs> Safari said, I know this is serious because the two of you have on matching outfits, okay? So things pretty much get heated and Cheyenne, she tried to lunge at Kaomi because she's flabbergasted at the fact that Shooter, her boyfriend, quote unquote, or so she thought, of two years, walks in with Kaomi, who looks a little familiar to her. Remember last week she said she remembers seeing Kaomi at her brother Scrap's house. Scrap De, Le De Leon, that is. Okay. So, of course, security shows up. Kaomi, she takes off her shoe and she hurls it at Cheyenne. And again, security is holding them both back. So, the funniest part of this scene was Safari's facial expression he couldn't believe it and <laughs> I'm sure he's seen drama unfold but we see him and Erica they're there at the game night so it does look like they are going to be a part of the Atlanta franchise because they moved back to the ATL but like I said before I don't want to see Scrap and I'm not Scrap uh Safari and Erica on this franchise, we we still don't even know what's going on with Love & Hip Hop New York. They just, like, sort of ended. What's up? Anyway, Scrap De Leon in his confessional says that he didn't know that Shooter's other girl was Kaomi. Because, remember, KK dropped that bomb when they were all in the kitchen. And KK was getting Miss Cheyenne together. He said he had no idea that it was Kaomi. And he said that, I've been knowing her for some time now. Mm. This is going to get ugly. You know, whenever somebody says, yeah, yeah, I've been knowing him or her for some time now. It's always some tea behind that. Anywho, Cheyenne said that, again, she saw uh, Kaomi leaving Scrap's house with an overnight bag. So, shoot, they're at, at this point, Shooter and Kaomi, they're outside. And Shooter's like, what's going on? Because they have an open relationship, right? Kaomi and uh, Shooter. That seems to work for the two of them. That's fine. But Shooter, you failed to tell Cheyenne that you were in an open relationship with Kaomi, which I think is unfair. So Cheyenne's anger is warranted and her emotions are warranted. Um, and that's why I guess Kaomi feels, you know, justified in approaching whomsoever, whomsoever because uh, Shooter makes her think that she's the HBIC, you know, wh whatever. If it works for them, it works for them. So Kaomi and Shooter, they're outside at this point, and Kaomi tells Shooter that she and Scrap were working on music. That, listen, down in Atlanta, that has to be code word for, how can I put this? What did Little Kim say in her song? Bees, suck D, just to get to the top. Maybe that's the relationship that they had. But what I want to know is, is Scrap De Leon a record producer? Is he a beat maker? What what foot does he have in the, or hand or foot, does he have in the music industry or the record making industry? Unless I missed something, I, I didn't know he was involved like that. Let me know, Royal Family, put it in the, uh, the comments. Anyway, so now Shooter is concerned about how Kaomi knows Scrap. Now, production, they flash back to a scene I don't know what season this was from, but they flash back to a scene where Kaomi is being real flirtatious with Scrap De Leon. So, mm -hmm. the nerve of uh, Shooter, though, to be concerned about how Kaomi knows Scrap. Mm. Anywho, so Scrap De Leon, he's not feeling how he's not feeling the fact that Shooter is making his sister look like a fool. Um, Cheyenne, she's outside talking to Scrap, and she's crying. You know, and Scrap is like, look, you too boss for this. And he tells her to get in the car, you know, just go home. And she's crying. She's obviously hurt. We shift gears to Erica and Safari. Again, I guess we'll be seeing them um, on this season. Safari briefly just talked about in his confessional at being at a crossroads with his career and building a tighter bond with his wife and his daughter. I think that he can do both. I, I genuinely feel that he can handle both, he seems to be very serious about being a husband and a father. Um, but will Erica make that easy for him? Nope. 
Moving along to the girls trip. Let's check on these ladies and see what they're up to, right? So Carly and Sierra, they miss each other. They're sitting outside and they're talking. And Carly reveals that her relationship with Mo has been a nightmare. Um, I do like seeing two people admit their shortcomings and make the effort to repair their, their friendship or relationship. So Sierra and Carly, um, seeing them be vulnerable and willing to do the work is refreshing to see, you know, uh, Sierra admitted to her shortcomings in the friendship. Carly did the same. So that was a good scene. So hopefully they'll be back friends because Sierra, she misses her friend. You can tell Carly. I don't know. Carly says she misses Sierra, but I don't know. I see a little bit of hesitation with Carly. So the ladies, they head to the slopes and, um, as they're on the bus going to, uh, going to ski, Shikana, she feels attacked by some of the ladies. Cause I guess Shekinah's getting on everybody's nerves and they're being vocal about it. So Sierra, she didn't want to talk to Shekinah about her and Carly's conversation and Shekinah got offended. Um, I think that at this point they've been around each other too long and it's time for them to all go home. That's what I'm getting. So Spice, she pipes up and she's tired of Shekinah's whining and says that, that Shekinah can dish it, but she can't take it. So Shekinah, she gets frustrated at everybody coming at her and she wants the bus to pull over because she got to take a smoke break. She said, I need to hit a new port and I need to hit a joint. <laughs> so they pull over wherever they are and, and Shekinah and Spice, they're still bickering. And um, Spice basically offers Shekinah out to the streets and says that they should just fight and get it over with. Shekinah said that she has too much plastic surgery to be fighting and she doesn't want to fight her. She's like, get her, get her. So you see securities out there. And Bambi, for whatever reason, she's just overwhelmed by all this bickering and she's pregnant and everyone is getting on her nerves and just messing with her emotions. Girl, the fact that you're pregnant doesn't have anything to do with anybody that's on this trip. Like, anyway, that's enough of her. So we move on to see, interestingly, uh, Kayomi and Erica. So they're meeting up for lunch, and I will say this. I did want to point this out. That jewelry box that Kaomi uh, gifted Erica's daughter was really cute. I thought that was a class. That's a cute, classy move. You bring a gift. You want to meet your girlfriend for lunch, and you haven't seen them in a while. Um, or I don't think that they're very close. I don't think they know each other like that. They probably know each other from Atlanta in, in passing. But I thought that that was a nice, classy gesture. And that, that um, jewelry box was really cute. I think it was engraved on the front as well. Anyway, I don't get why this meeting took place. I'm going to keep it real. Um, but Erica, she claims that she has shared experience with Kaomi. Okay, girl. So I guess she sees some of herself in Kaomi. But quickly after her saying that, I realized why this meeting took place. Erica, she just wanted to find out what's really going on. Um, Erica brings up Sierra because Erica and Sierra are cool so much so that on love and hip hop, New York, Sierra and Carly were at Erica and Safari's wedding. Um, she feels that Kaomi and Sierra should, uh, should meet. Why? Back to the girls trip. See, Erica, you being messy. This is why we don't want you over here. Go back to New York. Back to the girls trip. So Mimi, she arranges for the ladies to, after their, they ski, they skied. And the only person that seemed to have a good time on the slopes, it looks like was, uh, Mimi. She was the one that actually got to ski on the slopes. The other ladies were falling down and talking about kumbaya moments, cute, 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 whatever. Anyway, so Mimi, she arranges for the ladies to be on a Ferris wheel ride. So of course, Mimi, she puts Spice and Shekinah together and they end up talking and Spice pretty much explains to Shekinah how she felt about the house situation. Now I understand what Spice was saying. Um, she was in Jamaica at the time and she had to take a flight from Jamaica to Atlanta because she kind of basically promised her that she would help her out. Um, plus Spice, as she mentioned again, that she's trying to buy a home so that her children can be in Atlanta where she seems to spend most of her time. So I think without all, she kind of ended up apologizing. So I guess all is well, you know, their bickering was funny though. So I guess, um, them being away from the crowd and able to spice, really able to express to Shekinah, look, this is really what it is. Like, you know, this is serious for me because spices children at the time, 
they resided in Jamaica. So she had to take flights back and forth and it would just be more convenient for her to have her kids in Atlanta. And of course she wants to be with her kids. Like she's working hard to try to set things up for her family. So I get it. She kind of probably just didn't take it that seriously and they reconcile. So it's a problem that was easily resolved by them just sitting down and talking. So Shekinah's like, when you want to go look at a house? In my opinion, Shekinah, you could have been did that. But whatever, whatever. She probably had a lot going on. I don't know. So she said, when you want to go look at a house? All right, we can go tomorrow. So all is well. She apologized. They kissed. They made up. Now, back at the house, right? They get all. They all get back to the house and Sierra and BK are arguing on the phone, um, so much so that it wakes up some of the ladies and they come in the kitchen. So Sierra basically gets a call that BK was with some girl at the club, flirting, touching. She was touching his beard, yada, yada. And I'm like, Sierra, sis, are you, are you, why are you mad at this point? Like, hasn't, hasn't BK done this before? Girl, just cut your losses. You got, you got spaghetti over there trying to feed your son all types of foolishness. Uh, you got bigger fish fish to fry. You got shooter, got all these women's around your around your son. You ain't got time to worry about BK right now. Cause BK is just gonna continue doing the same thing that he does every season. Cheat on you and then turn around and shame you and accuse you of cheating on him and shame you for it, if it's even really true. Who cares? She tells the ladies that she previously found out that BK has a social media page even before her going on the trip and then he's following some girls, blah, 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 blah. Now on to the main event, it seems like. So we got Shooter and Kaomi. They're meeting up with Scrap and Cheyenne. So they meet up in the parking garage, okay? First of all, this meeting in the parking garage is real dramatic and I love it, okay? Um, I think the meeting should have consisted of just Shooter and Cheyenne, but I'm not against Scrap supporting his sister. So it is what it is. Um, I wonder if Shooter wasn't messing with Kayomi, would Scrap had have gone to that meeting? He probably just wanted to see what was going to come out. Anyway, so Shooter basically, he blames Cheyenne for their relationship falling apart. You know, he says that she went away for four months for business. And I'm just like, really? I guess that's the best that he could do. He, I don't really expect much from shooter right really that that's why why don't you just be try to be half of a man and just keep it real you wanted your cake and you wanted to be able to eat it too just keep it real this ain't got nothing to do with cheyenne going away for four months it might have but why not just tell her that instead of stringing her along but that's too easy right you know gotta make things difficult <sighs> like i said sierra Come get your son. You need to go get your son, Sierra. Shooter got both these women around little man, and they all crazy. And I'm not here for it. I still want to know what that baby ate shoving that nasty spaghetti in his face. Anyway, Cheyenne, she then brings up Kaomi being at Scrap's house. <laughs> Scrap said, I ain't got nothing to do with nothing. My name Bennett, and I ain't in it. And I just feel like, Cheyenne, girl, what, is, what else is there to discuss, really? Like, has KK taught you nothing? Like, shoot, Shooter is parading this woman all around in your face. And he's making it very clear that he's dealing with her. So Shooter tells Cheyenne that her position has been filled. Oh. <sighs> Damn. Cheyenne says in her confessional, let this be a lesson. You know, she said this is a lesson learned for her that she will never mess with a a bleep boy ever again. So then Kaomi and Cheyenne, they go at it again. They want to fight each other. I really expected more from Cheyenne. Um, but I guess that's what I get for being naive. But then again, now that I think about it, she was led to believe that she was in a relationship of sorts with shooter, uh, two years strong. So I get it. She's mad, you know, and not to mention, Kaomi's provoking her over there and she's already in Kate Cheyenne's already embarrassed and she's already hurt and Kaomi's just poking fun. So her temper got the best of her and they're in the parking lot trying to get at each other while security holds them back. That's where the episode ends. Um, next week. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Probably the same old, same old, but we shall see. So Royal family, this concludes this review for episode seven of the ninth season of love and hip hop Atlanta. Thanks for rocking out with me to the end of the video. Be sure to hit the like button before you walk out the dough, drop down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Keep all comments respectful as usual. And until next time, Royals peace.